Hi friends, Christine here, and I want to do a quick introduction to this video because it's one of a series of a uh, few videos that I use different materials that I emboss and distress to make various things, mainly tags in this case. Um, but I want to just mention that because I did the projects um, kind of concurrently and, and while other paint was drying, I did something else that I, I, when I edited the video, I tried to not be too redundant in the instruction, but give you enough instruction to be able to do each process. I hope I succeeded. So that said, it's worthwhile for you to watch all of them um, or at least, you know, skim them um, because I use a variety of materials, again, that are free and that should be in your house. And if, and if you don't have them, you know someone who does. Um, that's so that's for this and i hope it sparks um, some different ideas for you to do something even greater so on an unrelated topic i have stuff and i have so much stuff i can't even tell you um, this is obviously stuff i've used for my own personal projects um, and to design kits i always print out every single thing i create so that i'm sure that you're going to get the best product and best result but that means i have a lot of a lot of things um, and that i can't it just humanly cannot use so if you would like to get a small pack of happy mail um, i would like to choose a few random people. And I'll do that simply by, um, if you comment in, in any of the videos um, with this introduction that, that you want some of the, the swag. And, and again, I make no warranty. I mean, some of it is, is torn. I mean, I'm not always that professional um, when I'm trying to make a design. Um, some things like this, I will probably <laughs> skip, although that's a nice piece of cardboard. Um, but anyway, so, so you can see what's in here, the kinds of things. And then there's this whole other small bucket of goodies, you know, other smaller things that, again, I can't possibly use them in my lifetime. So if you think you'd like to get some mail, um, a little surprise packet, then again, just give me a comment, let me know, and then I'll um, arrange with the, with the, the selected commenters um, and how to do that and make that possible. So I'm sorry, I have to limit this to the United States. I hate doing that, but it's not economically feasible for me to ship something internationally at this point. Um, that may change and I will try and make that a possibility. But until then, go watch the video and I hope you learn some fun things to make beautiful little grungy items for your journals. Bye. Hi everyone, Christine here. Today I am making some of these distressed embossed tags. Let's see if we can get you in focus. I can never tell if they're in focus. Um, especially these really colorful ones. And they've been embossed and they look almost like leather on the back, which is kind of fun. This one's a little different. I'll explain this one differently and perhaps in a different video. Um, but today I'm concentrating on these. And what these are are simply, again, distressed cardboard. And they started out as these in various types of boxes. Um, yeah, that's all they are. That's where the color is coming from. So I have all these boxes. You can see I eat a lot of junk food or at least crappy health food. Um, and I have a lot of that cardboard and it's a little thin for making the books that I use the cereal boxes or the cracker boxes for the other day, um, but it's usable, workable cardboard. So what I did is I took the boxes and I took them outside and I spray painted them. So in various colors. And this was the original that I did, the green. And that is this, whatever, ultra cover paint primer set. This one was satin. The, um, the blacks were a flat which I think I'm going to really love. And this is a really old can of Laura Ashley. Do we remember Laura Ashley? Of Laura Ashley spray paint that I swear I've had since 1989. Um, but there's still some in it, so I tried that. And the idea for me now is to choose some of these and emboss them. And this is, I don't know what, how this will appear on screen. This is part white and part black. So there's kind of a mixture there and that could be fun to play with. Um, so the one thing that I would pay attention to, and we'll see how this one does, um, but all the other paints that I used um, said bonds to plastic. And all of these boxes have sort of a varnish coating on them. It's a coated stock. 
So I thought that would be the best choice for covering it. And regular spray paint that doesn't say bonds to plastic may work fine too, but this is what we're doing. So now you can see on the white one, I didn't do enough coverage. I should probably um, give this one another spray. So that's unfortunate. Well, maybe we'll do one and we'll just see. I can always touch it up with more white. But let's, um, let's do this. It's really easy, obviously. It's just embossing. Um, but I'll show you how I do it. And I'm really interested in seeing how some of these colors come out. So what I'm going to do now is go to the paper cutter and just cut these into more manageable squares. The embossing folders that I'm going to use today, I know you can hardly hear me, um, are are these I probably mostly this one this is the one I've been using and the one I'm set up to use but look at this one I have this um, computer circuit board thing that could be a lot of fun I've got a couple of these like the stripes I mean I would think these little circles would be really cute um, distressed in, in for a more modern modern look and then this is very Victorian. I'm in a Victorian mood, so I'm going to stay with probably these two, and I'll focus on this one. Although this one is bigger, so I could do a whole sheet, and that might be fun. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to trim these down, get rid of some of these flaps. I'll keep the flaps because I might be able to do something with them, but for today we don't need them. So hold on. I will be back. All right, so I put my Sizzix machine <laughs> that I've never taken the thing off of um, here so we can use that and you can see how I do this. And then I've got the cardboard. And I'm going to use this one white piece even though I would give it another coat um, before I actually did one in real life for a purpose. Um, be, but it takes 24 hours to let the paint dry. These I did spray yesterday because after I did the green guys, I was pretty like, oh, there's something here. So I sprayed these yesterday and now I'm going to play with them. So where should we begin? I said I was going to start with this, the other one, but I think I am going to use this one. So this I can actually trim down since the biggest it can be is that. So let me do that quickly. I basically just cut it in half and then I always when using something this thick um, use my little favorite thing on the planet okay among my favorite things on the planet is this little spritzer I wish I could say it in in French the pulverizer or the pulver doesn't matter the mini mister and I love this because the um, the mist is so fine and all I do is I spritz the back. Now I see I have an edge here and my um, folder might not like that so I'm going to cut it off. It, it was a crease edge or a, a scored edge from the actual box. So I'm just going to take my little mister and I'll mist it off camera because otherwise things will get a little wet but just a few, a few little mists, not too much, not too little. So the important thing to me is that you make sure that your painted side is up in terms of that you want an embossed pattern. You want the pattern to be up. Um, so usually that's just put, put that side up on the front, on the top side as where there's markings on your folder. And Again, I am not an embossing master. I hardly, well, actually I, I emboss plenty, but I don't really know any fancy, fancy tricks to share with you. So then I use, for this size folder, this is a Spellbinders. Um, for this thickness of folder, I use the big plate, the little shim, and then put that in and then put this on top. And that's usually enough. And we'll see, you don't need too much. There we go. Give it a good once over, and then we'll give it a twice over. Okay, so let's take this away and remove our 
our little pieces and see what we have. Oh, it's already beautiful. I don't even want to touch it, but so there you can see a nice pattern has been input, impressed into the cardboard. So now it's your decision. This is where you have to get artful. And I'm going to throw a piece of paper down because this is going to make some dust. And we're simply going to lightly sand it. I mean, you probably could have guessed that. We're just going to sand. I'm using pretty coarse. I don't know what this is, 80, 50. It's, it's very coarse. Um, but start with that. And just go various over various parts like so and you can see some of the colors starting to show through now I don't remember what's under here I think it's the blueberry breakfast bars box and I've not done it before with black in fact as of yesterday I'd never even done it with green but so let's keep sanding to our liking but you can already see it's getting this really nice color there's a lot of white in there from the original box but here comes some blue and you don't know what you're going to reveal um, if you don't pay attention to like what's on the box before you paint it so I'm going to go a little bit deeper in, in the sanding than I did say on this one. I didn't sand all that much off. That one yesterday, this one also didn't get to dry for 24 hours. I sprayed it and then I played with it within like an hour maybe. All right, but there we go. Beautiful, very different. And I'm going to now do another one. And then we're going to clean them up. So now, I really love this. So let's put this in here. And now let's try the red. So let me trim this down. And let's just do the same thing since that's what I'm set up to do. And I like this pattern. And oh, well, what? Let's be adventurous. It's not always good to always do what's easy. So this one could be good with this. Okay, I'll stick that in there. We'll try this pattern. So I'm going to have to adjust a little the shims and whatnot that I use on this. But now I have to find my little spritzer. There it is. I'm going to spritz off camera. That's just to soften up the fibers a little and help them to conform to their new their new shapes all right so I'm going to start with the same two that I always do the shim and the big plate now this one is a little thinner than my spellbinders that spellbinders one I think so I might want to add a little more juice yeah I feel like I'm getting no pressure whatsoever so let's try taking the shim out putting the other plate in, and that might be too much. Then I'll have to go get cardboard. Um, well, it's going, so let's go with it. Oh, it's not liking it. And I don't want to force it. Break something. For now, I'm just going to now turn it around and see if I can get it to go in that far to this part. Because, you know. Now that was better. Okay, so now that one side got done twice. All right. Let's see what we have. Oh yeah, I meant to show you the back of this too. I mean, it makes for a very pretty card on its own. And you can see this one had a little bit of um, roller issue here. And that, and just in that it had so much pressure on it, so much perhaps unnecessary pressure that it's already cracked a little and that's fine too because we are just going to uh, sand it off. So for this one let's start with a, a lighter 
lighter sandpaper. This is 150. And let's see what happens. Let me put that paper so I'm not cleaning up everything forever. And this is not taking off enough, so I'm going back to the heavy duty like 80 grit. And you can even just see it's like concrete. So let's see. Much better. So now I know we want to use a coarser paper. And the idea here is to pick up on all the corners, but this seems to be taking off the print as well. It looks like I'm getting right down to um, cardboard which is sort of interesting, but not what I wanted. Oh, no, wait, I take that back. I take it back. Let's see. That's color. Maybe it's just not colorful there. No, I definitely took it down to cardboard there. So I'm a little lighter. And see, this again is that old, old, old paint. So it, I'm sure it is formulated entirely differently than the newer paint that I'm using, the black and the green and the white. So it did show the color here. Let's go back to the lighter. See if we could just get some of the top to come off. There we go. So yeah, you'll have to experiment with the right grit paper to use but now we're getting some color and a nice worn look i still like this pattern more just saying yeah this one has too many flat spots i think it really helps to have fewer flat spots but let's keep going let's see what we get that's what today is about, experimenting. Well, that's pretty. Yeah, so it's definitely colorful over there. Wow, this paint is really adhered to it. Can you see that, though? There's definitely some there. So it could be that the trick is to not let it dry overnight, to let it dry just a couple of hours. Cause this, I was able to scrape off quite, quite easily with the 80 pound or whatever the other one is. And it came off in, in a way I find more pleasing for this project. So, keep going a little bit more. Let's see what we can get. Yeah, so it appears to me like in most of the places it went down to the cardboard, which is a, an interesting look. You know, it's kind of cool, um, but not what I want. So now let's try a different one. All right, black or white, black or white. Where's the big black piece? I do have a, oh, I did the black. Okay, so let's do a white. And I wanna go back to the original folder because I like that pattern more. I like it. I do want to try that computer at some point. Oh, what did I do with it? Okay. Well, while I find that, How far could it have gone? It's not these, it's not these, and it's not under there. Oh, it is under there. Okay, so back to this. Let's get this under here. We're gonna put this in here. We are going to do the white, which again needs a little bit more coverage, but could still be fun. Stick this. Oh, I didn't spritz it. Spritz it, spritz it. Could try it without and be a real experiment, but 
my experimentation in the past shows me you want to spritz it a little. And again, just, I mean, hardly any. Painted side up in the folder, folder on the plate, and crank away. You know, this is one of those things, I maybe should have read the instructions when I got this. I never have. <laughs> I just kind of go for it. Understanding the concept. Okay. All right, so that's pretty. Now I'm going to let that dry for a few minutes and be back. Okay. Let us go at this now with some sandpaper. All right, what I'm finding is it is coming off and it is coming off in colors, but more paint is sticking than I want. Again, with this one, the paint that came off came off much more easily and in larger pieces. So I am going to try it again without letting it dry for so long. Oh, I didn't put anything down. I will be vacuuming. Yeah, so if I go too too hard, let's try it with the lighter sandpaper and see what we get. It's still very beautiful and definitely usable. It's just not quite as vibrant as the original version. All of this started yesterday. And here I thought, oh, I'll spray paint it, I'll be patient, I'll let it dry. So here you can see it's still a beautiful effect and it's a great use for crappy cardboard. Um, and if, if we cut off this edges, these edges where you can read this through here, I don't even think you'd see that it actually says something under there. Um, but I'm going to go now spray one more box. And well, here, here, this will be a good test too. This is exactly what I used to make these yesterday. And I'm going to cut this and we're gonna try it and see how different it is than what happened yesterday. Okay, so let's try this one. And we're going to use all the same components that I used yesterday. And that would be Slightly misted paper. This folder. Through the Sizzix machine. good and hard. Looks nice. I used this yesterday for certain. So let's just see what happens. Oh, see, it's this paint. It makes a huge difference. Hmm, very interesting. And I can get it down to cardboard if I keep going. But if I just lightly, let's try with the lighter. It 
So you can really see here the difference in the colors coming up. It's much nicer for me, for what I'm going for. So now this I would take and I would cut in a way, probably in half, and make two tags out of it on the back. <laughs> There's all the white dust, but on the back it looks just like sort of leathery, which is nice. So I'm going to do that with these because I have some ideas for what I'm actually going to do with these and that's in a different video. But let me take a look and uh, let me take this over to the cutter. There we go. All right, so now here's two different ones and I took these and I just cut, cut them, a fat one and a skinny one. This one I'll go back and trim off that flat edge. And then of course I'll round the corners and put slots in or holes or grommets. Now this one is becoming more interesting to me. I feel like I want to like put some some Tim Holtz oxide ink on it and see what happens. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. What do you think? Should we? Yeah, let's. All right, what color? Um, I want to use a blue. The blue. Speckled egg. So now I'm just going to kind of rub it and stamp it. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. I love the varying colors underneath. And now, once again with the spritzer, hold on. Well, I guess this I'll do flat, so. Yeah, I want to get some of that roly-poly. Oh, nice. All right, I feel like I want to put more on, but I'm not going to, I'm gonna wait. It's only that glob there. Let's see if we can't get it to, to move. I could spritz it more. Well, I'm probably gonna cut that off anyway, so. But even there, I emptied the garbage yesterday because it was garbage day and now I don't have paper towel to grab out of the garbage, which is what I normally do. So I'm taking it out of my glue can. Just gonna blot that a little bit so it's not quite so lumpy. All right, so that's kind of nice. Has some different colors underneath. It's got the blue, that's kind of icky. Just take that off. And I'm going to let this dry. So now it does look like painted tin, uh, like a pressed tin that's been painted and has been worn away. I love this one. Hmm, definitely using that for something. And then while we're here, let's just do the black one, black and white one. But interestingly, it was this paint that peeled off so nicely, um, better than the flat paint. Now this is two, two different colors of flat paint. So it'll be interesting to see what we get. Okay, so you know the drill. I'll speed this up. Once is probably enough. Let's see, I really should try some of those. And I will. All right, so right now I'm underwowed by the effect of the two tone, the ombre effect, so to speak. But let's see what happens. I've been surprised by things before. Okay, so. so this white is coming off. Kind of cool. You know, it's kind of, I'm liking it. See that? You don't want to have expectations because they're just going to laugh in your face. So I expected this to not look cool. And yet, I really like it. And it has a definite fun, funness to it. And I wonder too, is it the kind of box? You know, we have all these variables. This box and this box, I'm barely certain were the same, although I thought this box was this box. And I still do. But anyway, um, so this looks kind of fun and different. And this was just using two-tone paint, sprayed it once, and then sprayed it again a little bit with white. It was black to start with. So this is my favorite, I think. 
Um, actually, that's not true. These are all my favorites. And I don't hate this one, but I don't know what I'm going to do with it because it did go down to the cardboard in it, which again is a fun look. Um, but it's almost as though this flat pattern, you know, this pattern is more broad. There's more flat areas that were better served by using these more intricate where you're really just taking off the top edge. And this one now I want to sand a different way because it's going all, all in the same way. And that's not always how th things wear. So I'm going to play with this for a little bit. Like there. But this is really fun looking. That's very like old world elegant. And this is kind of funkier. Hoo -hoo. And this is classic. So they each have their, their place. And I will, um, after I clean up a little, um, I'm going to try a few more and I'll try a different pattern and we'll see, see what we get. It's kind of a fun, a fun print circuit board. Okay, now we need some sandpaper. So let's start with I'm not letting it dry. I'm not going to let it do anything. Yeah, this red red paint is so stuck to the cardboard. So I'm pretty sure that is why I'm not getting a favorable result. Is that just this paint, this old formulation of paint is so adherent. Is that a word? It is a word, but I kind of use it that way. Um, to this to this cardboard that it's not giving me what I want. So I'm gonna throw that away. These on the other hand are lovely and wonderful and they're a lot of fun and I hope you try it and if you do let me know um, and then I'll show you next what I plan to do with these and I have another embossing trick that I'm trying that I think will be lovely as well that I will share with you. So that, but very nice.